Honestly, I'm not 100% sure which one I'm going to use. Hmm. Hi, I'm Matt and this is Not Enough Tech. I have a small story to tell. You might notice the different parts of the video is going to have a different lighting. And this is a reason for it because, uh, well, I have messed up and I had to reshoot it during the daytime. Okay, to the main part. We're going to talk about USB. USB PD in particular. But before that, let me tell you a story about this. This is a Lenovo Yoga. It's a very flexible hybrid between a tablet and a laptop and I bought it because it was slim and nice and I needed something with a decent battery life and that won't take all the space in my bag. Next to this computer there was an Asus with a similar specification with a USB Type-C charging and a £150 dear price tag which uh, well as you can see I've ended up saving. It's a decision I regret for a very particular reason because every time I go anywhere even though the laptop is nice, slim, and it fits anywhere I want, I need to take this because uh, well, it comes with a DC charger like that. And pretty much all that space-saving decisions went out of the window. So if you follow this blog for some time, you know that I complain about gadgets without USB Type-C port, or I give extra marks in my reviews for gadgets that do come with USB Type-C. Why? Because we should have made a switch a long time ago. USB Type-C it is backwards compatible, which means you can actually put the port and still operate it with a USB 2.0 specification. Manufacturing reason for that is that micro USB is less expensive and it's easier to integrate in existing circuits because USB Type-C needs special circuitry, circuitry to operate correctly. But it is worth it. So today I'm going to take advantage of USB Type-C PD, PD stands for power delivery, and hack my laptop. USB Type-C PD is clever in design, but I'm not going to get into a many details how it works. For the purpose of this video, you need to know a couple of things. Not all USB Type-C ports are the same, and not all of them come with PD standard. It's important distinction because the standard USB Type-C port can transfer up to 15 watts of energy. This is 5 volts for typical USB specification and up to 3 amps. So maths easy. The PD specification is split into 4 different voltages. We have 5, 9, 15 and 20 volts available. Now altogether it can transfer up to 100 uh, watts. However, it gets slightly more complicated than that. All you need to know for now is that 5, 9 and 15 volts are limited to 3 amps of current. And to achieve 100 watts of power, just do the maths 20 times how many amps? It's 5. Despite my poor purchasing decisions, I was slightly in luck because this charger actually comes with the following specification. It will deliver 20 volts at 2.25 amps for the total power of 45 watts. That's great because I can totally use one of these connectors to transfer a significant amount of power to charge the device and keep it operational. But I still have to solve two tasks to make this conversion possible. First of all, I have to say if I have enough space inside of this laptop to accommodate for the extra electronics that's gonna go inside. Second problem, I have to explain to the charger that I need to draw 20 volts out of this to power my laptop. That's not going to be figured out on its own and I'm going to use this clever module that has been programmed to do so. So as soon as the compatible charger is connected, it will tell the charger that this particular socket needs to draw 20 volts. Before I made any permanent damage, I just wanted to make sure that I do get 20 volts on my charger with this uh, module. And yes indeed, there is a 20 volts spot on. So I started with a obviously opening the laptop. There is the advantage of buying a cheapest uh, SKU from a particular model because you ended up with a plenty of space inside the laptop where would be all the premium components. And indeed that was uh, the case and the uh, majority of the space inside is just uh, not populated and I could easily find space for my module. 
Now, I was even more lucky with the uh, DC connector, which was separated from the motherboard, and uh, there was a cable I could pull out, which was attached to the motherboard with a connector. So, um, the idea of swapping the, uh, this uh, connector was very, very simple. I had to do is just uh, unscrew the bracket, remove the DC connector, uh, solder in the new one, and I was ready to go. Because my connector is slightly bigger than the old one, I knew I'll have to dremel out some bits to make space for it. Now, before I gonna make any permanent damage to my computer, I investigated again the polarity of the connector to make sure there is no mistakes, and then proceed with uh, butchering of the cable. I didn't even make a template for USB, I just kind of uh, kept it near uh, the socket and proceed trembling out the metal and the plastic bits inside. I was very careful because on one side I had a light and I really wanted to retain that charging indicator. Now, in the hand side I should have used a plastic bag to secure uh, motherboard or PCBs from metal chippings because they could cause a short. Uh, so I took some extra time to actually clean up the mess I've created with a Dremel and I used some uh, painter's brush to kind of brush off all the chippings. So if you're watching this uh, before you actually start doing anything, I would strongly recommend you to, to use that. Alright, this is a final job and it doesn't look uh, bad actually. There's a couple of scuffs because my Dremel slipped, but uh, yeah, it looks alright. Now it was time to change the cable, it was just the two cables, so it's a very simple soldering job. Again, once uh, the soldering was complete, I've tested the cable to make sure it's alright. Then I used a piece of electric tape to isolate it, and uh, I had to use a couple of extra uh, stripes of the tape to create a bit of a tension be uh, between the retaining mechanism and the um, USB Type-C module. Once I screwed in all the screws, and the socket was in place, secured. Present you with Lenovo Yoga USB charging! Ta-da! I'm super happy because that's gonna be the only charger I have to take with me when I'm going on holidays, when I'm going somewhere else. Well, it's a lockdown for now, so if you're watching it at the present, I'm not going anywhere. If you're watching this uh, video in the future, then know that uh, I wasn't able to actually go anywhere and benefit from that for a couple of weeks. <laughs> there is one more thing I've learned while making this uh, video. I've discovered how different are the chargers offered out there and I spent a lot of time actually looking for a compatible charger for my travel. I wanted to quick charge all my phones laptop and have the ability to power another USB Type-C device and I only found a handful of devices capable of doing so. One of them is going to be this charger which I'm going to review very very soon. So do pay attention to the specification not just power rating estimates because they always or often combine all available charging outputs. Alright guys, I hope you enjoyed this video of learn thing or two. Do you have any gadgets that you're willing to convert this way? Let me know in the comments uh, section to this video. Additionally, you will find a couple of links and a detailed tutorial about uh, this project linked in the description of this video. Thanks so much for watching and you probably know I do not have a posting schedule so if you want to be in touch, it's best to follow me on the social media of your choice which is listed just there. Uh, and you'll get a notification whenever I have a, an article or a video coming. So, whatever you do, be creative, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care. Bye.